I don't think I'd ever found myself filming a video intro with two fallow bucks behind me fighting and about 80 animals on a deer lake. But here I am. If you want to see how this week unfolds, stick around. I've got uttermost confidence that my rifles are zeroed correctly, but given the chance, I will give it a quick check on some gongs. I would hate to miss a trophy animal based on a knock on a rifle or something like that in transport. Perfect. meters from the car and down here we've got a heap of animals they're all croaking there's a few big clatters so we're pretty sure they're fighting I don't know if you can hear them over this audio We're just trying to use this grass as cover as we move down towards all these deer. It's pretty sparse back over where we were. You just end up getting busted. set up in our little position. There are deer all around us. A bit of this footage is through the grass because I'm trying to film over there. And I've got two deer just over there having a bloody fight 25 metres away. Just had a bit of a crawl. My mate's tucked up there in the timber. He must have got hungry. The cheeky bastard sent a frame there. He's just thrown me two apple and cinnamon hot cross buns. And I don't know if I can even get across the meter to get them. So we'll just see there's heaps of deer down here underneath us. And a couple over there on the other side of that log watching me at the moment. My 
mind scrolling, Dan. That's cold calm if I throw no cross buns at me. He's stuck in the target pad. We're just gonna keep moving down here. Really slowly. We've got deer down over this next shelf, so hopefully we can fuse some more animals. There's certainly no shortage. And that seems to be where all the does are. There's a really nice man eye buck down here. Big white palms curling at the top. Big guard tines, but we've got a heap of animals between us and it. So it's just a matter of whether we can get down there or not. We've made the decision, we're going to let that big buck down there walk, he's got a big cleft on one side, so we think we might be able to find something better, hopefully we don't live to regret that. I've been hunting deer for over 20 years and I have never experienced anything like this. Absolutely amazing. We're going to head over into this gully at the moment. There's more animals there. We haven't even laid eyes on them. We've watched that big buck walk off and you know what? That's okay. We'll either catch up with him later or find a different one.
we've moved locations. We're pretty sure we're over a lek here. There seems to be bucks filtering in and out all the time. We're just going to prop ourselves up, sit down, see if anything big comes in. We can hear all the does over there bedded down on the hillside, mewing away. They're probably saying, fuck me, fuck me. But anyway, it is the deer rut. No surprises there. There's our deer lake over there. I'm gonna try and crawl down to that tree, which will get me about 80 meters away. We'll see how we go. I'm being conservative here. Over on that hillside, there's about 40 deer that I can see. It's amazing how things change. The cloud cover's just blown in a little bit. And this whole little hillside's just lit up with bucks croaking. You can hear two fighting over there. We're in business. I've made it into this tree. I'm about 80 metres off that main scrape down there, top right of screen. You can probably see the buck croaking. And over in that gully there, I thought there was about 40 deer. There's probably 60. I'm going to be honest, I don't even know how I'm going to present some of this footage, so it'll be interesting how this video unfolds. I've got so much footage. Never in my life have I ever been anywhere like this. It's a bit of a hunter's wet dream to be honest. I'm not quite sure where to point the camera. The rifle, there's probably six bucks down there that on any other property I would have already pulled the trigger on. But there's bigger ones here so we're still looking. For those interested, this isn't a professional paid guided hunt. This is free range from a private property. Big thank you to the cattlemen that did let us into this area. It's uh, absolutely phenomenal here.
it's around the middle of the day and it seems it's siesta time there's a heap of deer down here just to sleep still a few noisy bucks i don't know if you can hear that over the audio but we're just trying to ponder what to do sat off this deer lake now for about four or five hours we haven't seen any new animals come in in about two hours so we're going to move across to the other side of the creek there's a heap of females over there calling out let's go and see what boys are with them holy shit how's that for a scrape big enough for you have to be wouldn't it we've come around this knoll so the valley that we were sitting on before where that little lek was it's off to our right we could hear heaps of does over here mewing so we've gone right back up the hill looped around as you can see center frame there there's deer under that tree top sort of left edge of the frame there's a dam there is deer between us all the way to that dam probably 30 or 40 animals that we can see if i pan around over here there are more deer under those stand of timber there probably a dozen then if i go right around there top left center frame there's another dozen deer over there and they're very vocal. But the interesting thing is, it's not the bucks that are vocal. It's the does that are mewing. So they're keen for the deer penis, it seems. We've also set ourselves up to camp on a big deer stand. There are rub trees and scrapes right through just underneath us. What a terrible spot. Down in front of us here there's a heap of deer still bedded up the group on the right there's three bucks with those nothing amazing at all the group on the left there's a reasonable men eye fella in amongst them we're contemplating grabbing a rifle and sliding in a little bit closer the wind's good there's not a huge amount of cover in here but there's enough to slide around on your ass and it doesn't seem to bother the deer too much they're probably 150 meters away so we're not miles away from them we're having some fun stalking around, that's for sure. Here's the game plan. I want to try and get to that tree there, centre frame. The deer are about 90 metres away at the moment. That tree's about another 30 up. Off to the left, about 30 yards, I've got two wallaroos, just to make it a challenge. And down to the right, I've got another dozen deer about 150 metres away. So I'm just bum shuffling at the moment. It's slow, it's a bit hot in the sun, but we're eventually getting there.
holy shit. I don't know if you can tell the camera's shaking. It doesn't matter how many animals you shoot. You get a big buck like that guy in the crosshairs in the middle of the rut with all these animals around you. It gets my heart pumping anyway. There's probably been a hundred deer that have ran off this face after I've pulled the trigger. I've had the big mob in the timber where that guy was and the other one down underneath. So awesome stuff. Let's go and check him out. What an awesome animal this guy is. We have put in quite the hunt to get down on this guy this afternoon. We've probably seen a hundred animals down on this face. We had to get the wind right. We've been crawling around in the tiger pairs on our ass as usual, but it makes it all the worthwhile when you get an animal like this on the deck. As you might be able to tell, we're contouring along this hillside. The sun's about to set. We've looked down beneath us and there's another big mob of deer. So we're just trying to see if there's any other good heads in there. There might be, if there is, we could pick up another one. We'll just have to see. If not, we're going to head up into the mountains tomorrow to chase red deer. Let this area settle down a little bit more after we've centered it up and then come back the next day. What a brutal climb up that hillside. As you can probably see in the camera, I'm sheened in sweat. It's a bit of a grind up there with all this junk on my back, but we're at the car. The bucks are still down there croaking and we'll be back. Early start this morning, 4.30 a.m. We're up under the bottom of these big hills we're gonna hunt today and we can hear two red deer roaring. No fallow yet. at the moment it's really pretty across the valley there's a whole heap of cloud blowing over the range which is quite nice and we can hear a couple of reds roaring on the other side of pigs down in under this tree and up here in that grass we've got at least two red deer on that opposite face and we've got another one up around this corner here probably a few hundred meters away we've got a red next saddle over I'd say about 300 meters up a little bit of elevation over us. He's having a bit of a go, so we're heading that way. There has been a fallow over there having a few croaks, but they're very few and far between. And we've got more reds on the other side of the valley over there. There's still a stag roaring up here, but you wouldn't believe it. Have you ever had a hunt ruined by a tree falling over? Well, I have now. We had a group of does in the gully down underneath us and a stag on the other face. He was coming straight in. He was all amped up. Bloody tree fell over. They all ran up the gully. So uh, we've had a bit of a chuckle. But there's more animals in here. We'll keep hunting.
masked up in the mist. We've got two red deer roaring up in front of us on this hillside. The wind's pretty good. It's exciting stuff, I do love this. It's, uh, it's funny how it goes from really quiet for about half an hour, then these two fellas arced up, game on again. He's getting unhappy. We're right up in the clouds now. We're trying to get around those two stags that were above us. We got an angle, a little bit of eyes on. There's a few animals up there, but the wind's not great. The angle was terrible, and they had a lot of elevation on us up on top of a cliff face. So we're going to loop right back around try and get on top of them. Bloody cockatoos. Bastards of things. If you can hear me over them, I'm pretty sure we've just been busted by those deer. We had a bit of a bark up above us. The wind's really swirling off this ridge line, so we've made the decision to back down the hill. No one ever likes to climb a hill and then go back down it, but that's what we're going to do. Um, we're concerned that if we continue up that ridge line where the deer were, and they're not there, so basically for no reason, down underneath us is going to get all centered out by us. So we're going to back out, continue with the plan, get down on this hillside lower, and continue to contour around. A couple of pigs down in here. They're only probably 20 metres away. They're trying to get in a bit closer. No, I think we've been busted. They're good fun though. We've just come in on this big wallow, but as you can see, it's dry. There's been a little bit of activity here, but nothing fresh. We've worked our way around this valley. We've come down onto some more, what is usually some wallows, and they're dry as well, so a little bit of a shame. We're in this really thick shit at the moment. There's a couple of animals moving around in here. A few bings and bashes in the timber, but we're gonna be doing well to get onto them in here. These girls just moved off above him. We just pushed a reasonably tidy buck off this scrape. He certainly wasn't a bad animal, but it's only early. We've got high expectations, and he's got a great little spot in here. It's really shady, nice breeze, and a good outlook behind us. So certainly put themselves in the right position to control their little domain anyway. We've just stopped for a bite to eat. It's the middle of the day. We've made the stupid decision to climb the biggest hill in the area. As you do, there's still a couple of reds moaning and groaning up there, so we're going to loop back around the valley right up on the skyline. Vegemite scroll for lunch. I bet you'd like to see the view. Too bad. We're getting our asses handed to us climbing up this hill. I'm not going to lie, it's a bloody steep one. I think that's the top. I bloody hope so. How good is that? We've made it up to our skyline and there is a red deer roaring right in that standard timber. Bloody glad there's something up here after that climb. You guys hear that? It's thick as shit in here. We got busted by a couple of does and a double five spiker sort of thing ran off over that way. We're not too worried about him. But we've got another animal down underneath us still roaring. We've got pigs coming through just above us. Just up there. Probably 30, 35 metres away.
mate's going to get some footage of these pigs now. They're still all up in this thick, spiky bush, but it'll be fun to play with them anyway. Well, this will be funny. He's about five or six metres from this bloody pig. A clown. Just sitting here, minding my own business, eating my Pringles. Quite a crinkly packet, and we've just had a fallow doe and two fawns come up between those trees behind the camera there. Pretty sure I got some good footage. We're just going to perch ourselves here for a couple of hours, let the day cool off a bit. It's about two o'clock. So around four o'clock, we're gonna head down this big long spur and basically loop back where we came up this morning in reverse. That's a good red deer scrape there. contouring this ridge line we're right on the back boundary of the property we've only seen a couple of fallow does with fawns up in here we did see one little spiky fallow buck that crossed over into the neighbours but yeah nothing of note there were a few red deer down in here earlier making a bit of a moan and groan but it's really quiet it's cool it's not hot at all it's probably only about 15 degrees up here and uh, yeah we thought we might have seen a little bit more than this We haven't seen nor heard any deer in about an hour, so what's a fella to do? Better shoot a pig. That'll be all she wrote for today, I think. It's been really quiet for about the last two hours. We've walked around a massive basin, haven't heard any croaks, and no more roars, which is really unusual. It's very windy, but that doesn't normally bother these deer. Anyway, there's always tomorrow. We're just trying to get into position on this knoll before it becomes daylight. Wish us luck. It's an absolute ghost town this morning. There's fellow croaking off on the next hills over, but down under where we are, absolutely nothing, which is really strange for them to be so quiet at this time of year. We'll just have to keep going and see if we pick something up.
Got him pretty tight on that guy, about 15 metres around a spiker thrash in a bush as well. But again, not a shooter. That little scrape, the bugger's digging a gravel quarry. She's chasing that spider. One deer down, awesome. Let's go and check him out. He's on the deck, mate. He rolling. Awesome little morning, we've walked into this spot, we've had all these deer down under us, we've watched them for nearly an hour, which has been really cool. As you can see by the size of that scrape, going absolutely nowhere this guy was. So in the end, we decided to take him. There's already more deer coming in. Let's continue. Put a layer of fat on him. It's autumn now in Australia, we're in the start of April, and it's the deer rut we're specifically chasing fallow deer, but reds are a bonus. This has always been my passion. Those of you guys that follow the channel, yes, I do a lot of vertebrate pest control, contract shooting, thermals, crop protection, livestock protection, all that sort of stuff, but this trip, no. We're just out in daylight hours, ground stalking these animals, trying to get a few big bucks on the deck while they're in the area. We've just glassed up down here about 10 does. Three bucks, uh, one's only a shitter. One's really small but mature. 
and one really nice head. The interesting thing was, the better head was the one that was getting chased off. So they've all just torn off down through the timber there. We'll uh, head that way and see if we can pick up again. Plenty of deer around this morning, but we can't seem to find any big heads. We'll just have to keep looking though. Bloody tiger pair. There's a heap of it in here. I haven't managed to jam myself with it yet, but probably will. middle of the day most of the deer are bedded up so we're going to back out to the car get some lunch and continue this afternoon look at this poor bastard tangled up in the fence that'd be a shitty way to die Just sat down in the shade we're gonna have some lunch let things settle down and then try and get in there bloody hell talk about go to woe we have just had about a hundred plus deer come across the valley mewing the whole way straight in on me I've had them right around me couldn't do a bloody thing I'm sitting here with this camera pointed in the wrong direction and I was not going to move at all. Most of them are down beneath me at the moment. Yeah, there's another group running in from the left just now. Um, yeah, we're not quite sure what to do. There's a buck herding his does around, but no big heads at the moment. Just lots of animals. When we got here, it was dead. There was about six bucks and that was it. But now, everything's just come flooding in in about five minutes.
You wouldn't believe it. This whole face down here is now empty of deer. Bar that one buck that was rounding up all the does before. He has gone from an absolute bonanza of does. Probably thought it was going to be the orgy of the century. And now he's just standing there all by himself. They have all pissed off. Every other single deer has ran over to the right. Now we probably got busted by a few behind us because of the breeze. But down underneath us, no breeze. We've got no reason why those animals ran away at all. Wow, I don't know what to say to that. I've never seen anything like that before. They haven't been driven over here. They haven't been scared. They're all happy and mewing on the way over. Milled around down there for five minutes. All gone. What we've found is, down beneath us, there's some contract fences. They've got a radio and a post hole driver. It's pushing these deer from gully to gully. This is a free range hunt. We're not in a fenced property, if anyone's wondering about that. There's just a lot of deer here. So what we've done, set up a little bit of a hide. We've put a few logs up, branches. This one's got a custom camera holder. My mate, he's tucked over in on that side. We're just gonna sit here until it gets dark. We've got a few hours to wait. See if anything decent filters past. I always get asked what rifle I'm using this trip. It's my 3006 Custom Tika T3. Fluted barrel, fluted bolt. It's in a Southport Labs carbon fibre stock. It's about 7.2 pounds. Loaded Swarovski Z5 2.5 to 12 by 50 scope. Running 178 grain ELD X projectiles. I was going to give my mate a huge thank you for the invite out on this trip. Commonly known as Bucket for his little stint with a KFC thing on his head. But he's asleep, so I can't really thank him much. It's just about snoring. I think he was snoring yesterday. He woke himself up. He snored that heavy. It's a hoodie. I'm just about out of light, so I think we'll call that a wrap. I have had the most amazing week. I've never hunted deer in the rut like this. Each day we've probably glassed a minimum of 20 quality barks and countless spikers. We've seen hundreds of does. It's certainly a phenomenal area. Huge thank you to my mate who I've spent a lot of this week with. He doesn't wish to be named, but I know who you are. If you did like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Ensure you subscribe to the channel with the bell icon on. A huge thank you to all the people that support me on Patreon. Please have a look at that. Trips like this aren't possible without that kind of support. I'm running expensive camera gear and the time to edit all of this stuff. And those guys, well, they're the ones that prop all this up. Anyway, I'll see everyone next time. Sorry guys, it's pissing down raining. We've just had a big thunderstorm roll in. The cameras are going away. We've just walked over a roll with rifles on our backs. Probably not the most safest feeling, but I'm gonna put the camera away and head down this slope with the rifle and the binos while the fellas are still croaking for us.